Hello there, my friends. How are you all doing today? My name is Rabbit, and thank you so much for joining me for episode number 23 of Let's Semi Blindly Play Through Eternal Eyes for the PlayStation 1. In our previous episode, we dove head first into the nether regions, and now, for whatever reason, Luke wants to go even deeper into the nether regions number two. But before we do that, I. I sort of was thinking, and while I'm not entirely certain whether or not I'll be able to evolve Abby further anytime soon, because I am not wanting to devote any off time or off screen time to doing this again, at least not right now, but I digress. I did pick up a couple new orbs, and so I wanted to go ahead and just throw some jewels at Raj and Haresh at least, just to see if we can open up the pool of spells that they should have access to, because I think at this point and with these forms, if not medium tier, high tier spells should be something that they can start using. So let's just go through the motions. I actually want to start down here with white wisdom. I feel like the game is trolling me with this and it's perfect because both Raj and Haresh will be able to learn a spell from this. Okay, so we've got a lesion on Ranjit and we will get maybe a lesion for Haresh as well. Yes, we did. But hey, you know, that's okay. And as you can see, we're already getting a sequence started, but I feel like more than likely what's going to happen is, hmm, we're probably going to accidentally reset these, which I'm fine with, like I said, not trying to spend any time either right now or off screen going through the motions again like I did to get Raj and Haresh looking like their pretty selves right now. Well, let me not lie. I think Haresh looks pretty legit. I'm still unsure about Raj. I did take a nice little tea break, so I'm feeling much more refreshed. But anyway, I digress times two. Why don't we just go ahead and throw this one at, I don't know, Haresh? Even though I probably shouldn't poise Ron. Ooh, that must be an advanced version of... That's a little wild. He's already at two jewels being cued like Abby, so I might need to watch myself. Oh my goodness, and he would learn more magic, but we're gonna be fair. Let's see if Raj can get anything. Ooh, wave. I don't think we've seen that before. And just more magic. This is nuts, but I want to be a little careful, because you guys, what if I could legitimately figure out the recipe to get somebody up again. I mean, probably not. It doesn't look like, ooh, red wisdom. Well, you know, whatever. We're just gonna throw this one on Haresh. It's probably gonna fuck him up. And he got Ignis, which is okay. Sorry, bro, you had to start all the way over. And then at this point, I guess I don't really care. Let's throw, was it? No, who had one here in blue? Or am I making this up? Okay, it was Blue Beast that on Raj will give him Hell Dogu. <gasps> what? I think that's the first time we've seen a spell specific to the puppet. That's crazy. Okay, well, let's just go through the motions. Magical Force up. Great. I actually feel bad. I haven't been putting anything on Abby just because I had something cute and I didn't want to mess it up, but. Eh, like we've seen, who cares? We'll always be able to start somewhere. And this also ties in to what I was sharing with you guys in our last episode. I tried out the mechanic of having, oh, I've got blue going now. I tried out the mechanic of having Luke consume one of our jewels for the sake of him casting. I'm guessing it's somewhat random. I don't really, I don't know how they do that. And oh my God, he's got two blues now? What is going on? And poor Haresh, no stat increase for you. But anyway, I tried having Luke consume a jewel in order to cast a spell. And while it was decent damage, I think one of them that he did, was it like Icicle maybe? I can't remember exactly what the animation would be tied to, but the point is the damage was okay, but I don't think it's worth actually consuming one of the jewels, and I talked fairly extensively about it, although I was hella distracted with all the other shit that was going on in the screen because Raj is looking a little crazy, and that was very difficult for me to adjust to, but it's all good. I still don't really love his design, but you know, I think it's important to have some variety. So we've seen Elysian before. Those two are old school. Here is Wave, which throws 
an SW, a medium amount of damage results. Maybe we have seen the description for this before, it's just never been on our party. And then here's how Dogu, which is brand spanking new, never seen it before, never possessed it before. And it just says, oh, it's the same effect as Nebulas. Okay, that's a little disappointing and underwhelming, so it's not even a unique, oh, Abby didn't learn anything, so my bad, Abby. No screen time for you. But that's a bit disappointing that there's nothing, huh. There's nothing unique about that ability, even though the name implies that it's specifically tied to the species of puppet that Ranjit happens to be. Oh well, so we've got Poison, which allows recovery from the attack status. Is it talking about something, I guess, that lowers your attack? Poison will nullify that effect? That's odd though, you would think it would nullify the effects of Poison, and I believe Poison lowers magic defense in this game. So. Again, that's so odd, and I'm not sure the thought process behind some of these things, but I mean, that's not even a big deal at all. And then we got Ignis, which I believe Abby has as well, so that is no longer new for us. But all right, friends, just so that this intro is not nearly as long as the last one, and oh my gosh, I feel like my voice is dying, probably need some more tea. Let's go ahead and head into the nether regions, number two. I can't help but feel like this fairy can't be too far away. I mean, this is what, our fifth area? We did the entryway to the Misty Forest, then two normal places, and then now two levels of the nether regions, and oh, ooh, more new puppets. Y'all already know, I've got to check some of these out, so let's take a second. Oh, these are recolors also. Okay, so in our last fight, we saw those little orange tomato looking things, and I was telling you guys, they're recolors of a green puppet that I found back in the goondocks when I was doing some backtracking and off-screen stuff there. I think these were purple. I don't actually remember what the normal, and I say that in air quotes, because who even knows what's normal in this game. But those lower level versions of this were some sort of color. But I, I really like, it's a like a beige with green. That's, that's a beautiful color palette. But anyway, its name is Clavel, and it has Mahammer, as well as Sia. So not too scary, but... We're gonna have to keep our eyes on that, and I have never seen this puppet before. It looks a little depressed. Its name is Baboon. It doesn't look anything like a primate. Well, maybe it's supposed to be a weird combo of, y'all, I don't know, it doesn't look like it to me, but it's got Wave, which we have seen, and Shaker, which is, it might be the advanced version of it if you see the two descriptions side by side here. One throws an SW and the other one throws a huge SW. So I'm guessing that's what Shaker does. That is a little cool. I have not seen those guys before. And then these, maybe we, I think we've run into these. Maybe we have, maybe we haven't, but these are Matango and they know Gastoga spreads a vacuum tornado, a medium amount of damage results. Okay, so we're seeing more powerful variations of spells and abilities that we've been encountering, but it's so nice just to see what the upgraded versions of some of these happen to be. And if I can hit this guy, we're gonna try. Y'all know the drill, we're gonna divide and conquer. I feel like my puppets are strong enough to wear. Everyone doesn't have to be hugging each other's nuts and we don't need to be moving in an order. Oh shit, I also had meant to share with you guys, I was looking off off screen at kind of what auto does. And hold on, I will talk to you guys more about that in a second. I have to see, what the hell? Why is Raj's range so ridiculous and just erratic? Or maybe it's not actually erratic, but it looks that way and, okay, should have stuck with the magic because that didn't do a fucking thing. But Abby is going to come up here and hopefully finish this off. I think if we can just, buy our time for one turn and have the enemies start to converge on us, I think that's gonna be the way to go. But I will start throwing Haresh more to the right hand side. Eh, maybe I should have everyone hugging each other's balls just for this first introductory set of plays. Hmm, yeah, you know what? I think that is what I'm going to do. We will just go ahead and move over here. And if I can, Poison. I really want to see the effect for it, but I don't have anyone to use it on. So let's use Elysian. Oh, I keep forgetting that I have spells that have a bit of spillover. So I need to be internalizing 
what has some range and AOE to it, and what is just isolated to one grid. But all right, one down, so that's damage we're not gonna have to fuck with. <laughs> His dance. I am digging the way Harash is looking. I think this ghost line, whatever path I ended up accidentally propelling this puppet towards, I have thoroughly enjoyed every single form that we've ended up seeing from it. So I'm not mad about it at all. I think that Raj's has been a little all over the place, and I don't know if they're supposed to be a sensical pattern to the way that puppets evolve. You know, even though obviously there, there is a bit of diversity depending on, you know, you've got this blank slate of a puppet, and then what you start them off with, I'm guessing, there, there are like six maybe initial starting points based on each of the colors. And then from there, I would guess it just diversifies further. And maybe some of them loop back around to each other. I mean, I don't really know how intertwined some of the different puppets are. But I don't know. Either way, I still hold fast to the idea that it almost just feels like Raj's evolutionary line, there's no major thought process to it and maybe it's because they just had a lot of designs and you know how do you go from a mushroom creature to something that is shaped like a card or a dark knight or I mean there's just only so much I guess they could really do since this isn't modeled exactly like Pokemon where they're supposed to have a clear evolutionary line per beast type at least that's how I'm taking it I'm trying to see. Let's use Wave. I think Wave. Oh, does Wave not? Y'all, what the hell? Well, then in this case, we're just going to kill a puppet. But I think I need to pay attention to the list of spells that have that AoE spillover. Because outside of Temp, I honestly couldn't share with you guys what spells. Well, I think I have a Geyser spell that does. Maybe? I'm not sure, but we're gonna stick with the tried and true. Oh, does Ignis attack more than one? Ooh, y'all, it sure does. Oh, I can't reach that little asshole. You're kidding. Well, whatever, damage on two is better than just damage on one, so we'll kind of go with it. But anyway, you guys, it's been like three episodes that I've been trying to talk about working designs. I guess, you know, at this point, the moral of that story, if you want to even call it such, is that I've heard that you guys are interested in seeing me play Lunar, as well as Lunar 2, and yeah, I, I wouldn't take this as like a major confirmation or anything, but do know that it has been on my radar for a long time, and it's something that even without feedback, I was wanting to, I think this is the one, okay, it is. Even without feedback or without suggestions about those two games, they were titles that I, you know, have been looking into playing for a while. It just hasn't really happened yet. I've just had other things that have kind of taken priority. But I don't know. I've been getting a lot of requests for Lunar and Lunar 2. But that was one of the things that I guess I was starting to say is that if I did play it, I would absolutely be playing the PlayStation version. So the two complete ones. Oh, that motherfucker. It just, it's so annoying, no matter how many times it happens, I just don't get used to it. Ever, ever, ever. Oh, that makes me so mad, but it's okay. You know what? We're good in terms of equipment. We're good in terms of jewel drops. So, you know, fine. If they wanna be little assholes, they're really just making me angrier. Not that I was going to spare their lives anyway, but it sure ain't happening now. But anyway, so for the Lunar games, I will be playing the Lunar the Silver Star Story Complete as well as Lunar 2 Eternal Blue Complete once I do, you know, decide to have that enter the rotation. I do have a couple other options for games that are from working designs. And oh, that was the other thing I was saying that I'm pretty sure the Sega CD version was also localized and translated, if you will, by working designs. But... I, now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if they did a more literal translation for that one, or there was something that really was quite specific and people weren't having the PlayStation version to the Sega CD version. And I, for the life of me, can't remember the specifics of it, but I think part of it is also that 
I don't have experience playing the Sega CD version. I've seen a little bit of it, so I know visually how they differ, but I could not, I couldn't really tell you outside of, I know the PlayStation version has more cutscenes and I think more voice acting, but y'all, I think, I don't know. So for me, while I don't have a horse in the race of the PlayStation version versus the Sega CD version, I'm sure they both have pros and cons. Like from what I recall hearing people discuss and seeing people, you know, just rant about online, it's my understanding that the Sega CD versions, the story makes more sense. And so I don't know if that's, if working designs the dialogue they translated it in a more cohesive way so that conversations flowed and maybe objectives made more sense and motivations were more believable versus possibly the PlayStation version. Maybe there's more English. Like, I don't recall having any issues playing through the two games on the PlayStation 1. But, I mean, granted, it has been a few years, so I'm not the person to say 100% like, it didn't have any flaws or didn't have any translation issues. Oh, uh, let me see. What do I want to do? Let's just use Gravi. Oh, we will not be using Gravito because I can't reach. But we can use Grail. And you are going to be suffering, bro. You fucked up my chest. And now I'm going to have to fuck up your chest. So I don't really know why they would have changed the translation too much. But I can see it that maybe if they started relying on fancy cutscenes, they... Might have dropped the ball on a couple of specifics. I really don't know, but it will be interesting if slash when, or I guess it really is just a matter of how soon this would really come to fruition. I dove into those titles just to hear people's thoughts as we go through it. Most of the people I know, and I guess most of my friends and acquaintances played the Sega CD version. I think I'm one of the few folks in my gaming friend group, which granted is small, so please <laughs> don't even think that this means that I just have just video game buddies bursting from the seams, like absolutely not. I think out of all of my friends, maybe one girl legitimately has played games her entire life and likes video games. And I think I have maybe like four guy friends that play video games outside of like MOBAs. I think just from Andrew and a lot of his research, we've met a lot more people that do online gaming. So even like MMORPGs, which hey, no shade. I was so into MMORPGs. Ooh, a fairy bracelet. We're gonna have to peep that ASAP. When I was in middle school and high school, I loved MMOs. I think I've talked to you guys about this before that I have played so many MMORPGs and have wonderful memories of my experiences and all of them. Just Oh my gosh, there was something really magical about being a part of a virtual world, but as you just get older, or at least for me specifically, with all of my commitments, I just cannot justify paying a monthly subscription when I would never have time to really sit and do all the things that I would want to do. But I understand why some people do still play because I don't think I've ever really had like with MOBAs, which the advantage to those is that you can just pick them up and you can play one game of League of Legends or one game of Dota. Like, no, you're not gonna reach the highest MMR or the highest ELO, but you can still understand mechanics and be not garbage and it'll still be rewarding and fulfilling and fun to play one or two games even every other week. But MMOs, it's just like such a time sink. And even though it's a rewarding time sink, it's just so hard to justify once you reach a certain point of your life and have certain commitments. But who knows? Maybe in the future. Anyway, the fairy bracelet here is a bracelet cast with fairy powers. It increases your mana points. I don't know if I want to remove anything from anyone for this, but we can just take a look. Like, all it does is raise MP. I that's cool and maybe there would be some circumstances where it would be worth it to give that a go and oh my god the nether regions number three y'all looks like it's gonna be more story time in our upcoming episode number 24 i don't know where the fuck this fairy is but she show knows how to hide from us so we're just gonna have to keep on diving deeper luke are you ready I think he's ready. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. My name is Rabbit. This is my semi-blind run through eternal eyes on the PlayStation 1, and I appreciate having you guys along for the ride. So take good care of yourselves, be good, and I will see you in just a moment when we're ready to launch forward into episode number 24.